When you first started getting involved as a lookout at 8th and Butler, essentially what did that mean? What did you do at the age of 13 at 8th and Butler? We was just getting paid to watch out for the police, you know, see if the police was coming, just to make sure that the cops didn't catch the drug dealers. Okay, were drugs being sold openly on the street at 8th and Butler? Yes. All right, how would you do that as a young, as a 13 year old? We would each stand on the corner at the end of the block, one playing on the other end of the block or on the side streets over and all the way down to 9th Street. When the police is coming, you holler it up and it retaliates to somebody else and somebody on the block would hear it. Okay, to your knowledge, is this something that is commonly done in open air drug markets? Yes. All right, now did there come a time when you left your house at 3256 North 6th Street and stayed at another house in another part of the city? Yes. All right, where did you go? I went to South Philadelphia. All right, why did you leave your parents' house and go down to South Philadelphia? I was young, being rebellious, wanted to explore on my own. All right, whose house did you stay in, in South Philadelphia? My grandmother's. Approximately how old were you when you made that move down to South Philadelphia? About 15, 16. Now, Mr. Coleman, when you went down to South Philadelphia, did you continue to have some involvement in drugs? Yes. What involvement did you have in drugs in South Philadelphia? Started at the end of the block on 23rd and Fernon. Is that Fernon, F-E-R-N-O-N? Yes, I started at 23rd and Fernon. I was selling dime powder bags for Kevin Everett. Is that the person that you were working for at the time? That's the person I was working for at the time, yes. Okay, when you say dime powder bags, what kind of drugs were those? Cocaine. All right, cocaine powder? Cocaine powder, yes. As opposed to crack? Yes. All right, when you were selling drugs down there, was your brother living down there as well with you? Yes, he came down. Okay, was your brother involved at all in selling drugs down in South Philadelphia? Not down there, he was not involved in nothing like that too much. Okay, when you say not like that too much, well, he tried to dibble and dab, but he wasn't successful and he let it go. Okay, is it fair to say that you were much more involved in selling drugs at the time? Yes. All right. Now, when you were selling drugs in South Philadelphia, did you meet a person who became known to you as Dawood Bay? Well, yes, we both started working for Kevin Everett. Well, he was already working for Kevin at the time. Then I started, and that's when I met Dawood Bay. Okay. Your Honor, well, the council is looking for that. Can we put a time frame of a month or a year when that introduction was made? Mr. Troyer? Yes. Approximately how old were you, Mr. Coleman, at the time? About 15, 14, 15, 16 at the time. All right, I'm going to show you now 254. I'm showing you what's marked as 254. Do you recognize this person? Yes, Dawood Bay. Okay, I would move in 254 as well, Your Honor. It's admitted. So were you and Dawood Bay working together selling drugs for Kevin Everett? Yes. Did there come a time when Dawood Bay approached you to get involved in other criminal activity in South Philadelphia as well? Yes, at the time, South Philadelphia is like a small area. It was evolving and the drugs was really picking up. Dawood moved on his own. He could get people together because he was in a Muslim community. He tried to form his own little, join the crew with him, and I told him, no, I wouldn't join it. Okay, why did you decline to join a crew, as you put it, with Dawood Bay? Because I didn't trust none of them. Why did you not trust Dawood Bay? Because they wasn't good with each other. They would kill each other. Okay, did there come a time then when you ended up moving back to your mother's house on North 6th Street? Yes. 
Okay, now before you moved back there and as you were getting involved in selling drugs in South Philadelphia, did you end up getting arrested in South Philadelphia for drug sales? Yes. All right, directing your attention to 1991, did you end up getting arrested for and picking up two cases selling crack cocaine? Yes. Were those large amounts or small amounts of crack cocaine? Small amounts. As a result of those two cases, did you get sentenced for those two cases at the same time? Yes. All right. Again, relating back to 1991, what were you sentenced to, sir? 18 to 36 months. All right. How much time did you actually serve of that 18 to 36 month sentence? 18, I think the whole 18. All right. When you served that 18 months, where did you serve that 18 months? Was it in a state facility or a county facility? I served in a county facility and then I went to a halfway house. All right. After you completed your sentence, those facilities were in Philadelphia, by the way? Yes. After you completed that sentence, when you came back, where did you live? I got paroled to the house in South Philly, but I stayed in it for a minute or two and came back up north. Okay, when you say a minute or two, you mean a short time? Yeah, a short time, and then I went back up to North Philly. Okay, when you went back to North Philadelphia, did you live in your parents' house? Yes. And Mr. Coleman, where did you end up going to school? I went to Harding. Is Harding a junior high school in the Frankfurt area? Yes, I went to Harding, went to Frankfurt, went to Olney, and then I went to South Philadelphia High. Okay, so Frankfurt, Olney, and Southern or South Philadelphia High? Yeah. Those are all high schools in the Philadelphia public school system? Yes. Okay, did you graduate from high school? No. Now, when you finished this prison sentence, did you go back to selling drugs? Yes. Okay, when you finished your first prison sentence of 18 months, where did you go to sell drugs? Well, I went back up to Erie Avenue. I went to met up with Kabani. Okay, when you refer to Kabani, you're talking about who? Kabani Savage. All right. Now, before going to prison, had you been dealing drugs with Kabani Savage at all? No. So after you got out of prison, what was it that caused you to start dealing with Kabani Savage? I was talking to his cousin on the phone and Manny, and I went back up there and I met Kabani outside. We was talking and then I was talking about he was talking to his cousin on the phone at the time because he was in prison. I talked to Manny on the phone and he was like, stick with my cousin. All right. Did you develop a friendship and a relationship with Kabani Savage at that time? Yes. Did you know members of the Savage family? Yes. Who did you know? His mother, his two sisters, his other brother, his aunt, Manny, his other aunt that lives down at, well, Richard Allen. Okay. When you refer to Kabani Savage's mother, is that Barbara Savage? Yes. You mentioned his sisters. Who are his sisters? Conchetta Savage and Kadita Savage. Do you see Kadita Savage here in court today? Yes. Can you point her out for me, please? She's right there. Indicating for the record, Your Honor, Kadita Savage. The record shall so reflect. When you met up with Kabani Savage, what type of drugs did you start selling at that time? We were selling crack out on Huntington Park. Okay, when you mentioned Hunting Park, is that the actual park itself? Yes. All right, what amounts of crack were you selling out in Hunting Park? We were selling, some days we would sell $5 crack and other days we would sell two for fives. Okay, when you say $5 crack, are you talking about a small $5 rock of crack cocaine? Yes. Where were you getting that crack from? Kabani. 
Now, when you got your crack cocaine from Kabani, did you know where he was getting his drugs from at that time? He was getting it from Gerald Thomas, from Bubby Gerald Thomas. You also mentioned that you knew Kabani's brother, that he had a brother. What is his brother's name? Joe. What happened with Joe? He passed away. Approximately how long did this dealing in Hunting Park last, Mr. Coleman? Not long, a couple of months. Who else was dealing with you in Hunting Park? Me, DJ, Rick, and I forgot the other one's name. Okay, so there's someone named DJ? Yes. Who was involved with you? Yes. Okay, who is Rick? Do you know Rick's real name? Anthony. Okay, does that refer to Anthony Mitchell? Anthony Mitchell, yes. What happened to cause you to stop dealing crack cocaine in Hunting Park? It wasn't picking up like it was supposed to have been, and we moved down to Erie and Percy. Okay, now when you moved to Percy and Erie, what drugs did you start selling there? PCP, wet. All right, is that a liquid form then of PCP? Yes, it's an oil drug that you put on spearmint leaves. All right. Your Honor, if I could again object and simply ask for a clarification of time when this transfer occurred. Mr. Troyer. Yes, approximately when was it that you switched over to selling wet or oil as liquid PCP around Percy and Erie streets? I don't know the exact dates and times or anything. Okay, so if you had been released from your earlier sentence, did you go back at some point and get arrested on a probation or parole violation to go back? Yes. Okay, when were you released then? Did you go this time period of Percy and Erie? Would this be sometime in the mid to late 1990s? Yes. All right, the liquid PCP. Could you explain then the liquid PCP, how it was prepared? It's an ounce of oil we would buy. We was getting, we started off with two or three ounces first. Okay, when you say oil, the oil itself is what? PCP. All right, go ahead. We would mix it with spearmint leaves, an ounce of spearmint leaves or two ounces, and we would put it in a mayonnaise jar, pour the oil on it. We would put oil on top of the leaves, shake it up until they turn black, and then put it in the freezer. Okay, how long did you then leave it in the freezer after putting it together and shaking it up? You would leave it in there. If you want it fast, it would be like 40-45 minutes. But if you wanted it to be good, moist, and wet, it would take like an hour up to two. All right, after leaving it in the freezer for a while, what would you do with it then? You would take a baby spoon out and then you would put it in a white waxy bag and the baby spoon would have the right amount to put in the waxy bag and then you would distribute it and put it on the streets. Okay, what does this product that you're describing smell like when you take it out of the freezer? Oh, it's a horrible smell. It's a foul odor. All right, when you put it in the waxy bags as you describe them, would you put any markings on the waxy bags? Oh, yes, we would stamp it. All right, what kind of stamps would you put on it? Our first stamp was Spark Madism. What's the purpose of putting a stamp on the bag? It clarifies where it's coming from, what block it's coming from. All right, now referring to the mid to late 1990s, this preparation of oil and wet, where would this occur, Mr. Coleman? In Cabani's basement. All right, did you participate in preparation of this oil in Cabani Savage's basement? Yes. What freezer was used then for freezing the product as you described earlier? Cabani's mom's freezer. All right, where was that in the house? Upstairs in the kitchen. All right, did there come a time when they stopped using that freezer? Yes, because she was upset that the smell was going through her food and stuff, and she got tired of the smell, so we bought a little freezer and we put it in the back part of the basement of his house. Is that where you would freeze it then, after that? Yes. 
Now, do you know where Kabani Savage was getting the oil that is the liquid PCP that was used to make this product, this wet product? Yes, at one time we were getting it from Bookie and another time it was Stefan. As time grew on, he got it bigger from New York. All right, so that's three sources that you mentioned. Somebody named Bookie, is that right? Yes. Somebody named Stefan? Yes. And then a third source up in New York? Yes. Did you ever travel with Kabani Savage to New York to get supplies of oil? Yes. Okay, specifically, where would you and Kabani Savage go to pick up this oil? In Harlem, 125th. I think it's 125th in Lenox. Okay, was that essentially in the heart of Harlem in New York? Yes.